Welcome to eLearning Today TV. Today is Friday, September 17th, 2010, and we are coming to you live from the, oh, we're not live, but we're coming to you from the Learning Today office. I'm <laughs> alive. <laughs> oh, okay. We're not live. <laughs> the show's not live. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So we're in the Learning Today office in sunny South Florida. I'm Lauren Grossberg. And I'm Andy Keenum. And we are here to bring you the latest in educational technology and e-learning from our blog. If you're not following us on Twitter, I'm at LG Educator. And I'm at A Keenum. And make sure to check out our website for more teacher and educator resources. Starting off, we're live, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> our school of the week, our feature of the week, um, the Vermont Center for Deaf and Hard of Hearing. They just started a new program, I believe, the end of August. And it's actually a deaf autistic program. So what they're doing is they're combining um, students who are autistic and deaf, which is recently they've been saying that as the numbers increasing of autistic students, so are that they're deaf also. So they want to really focus on this kind of group of students. And they're using the same uh, curriculum and program, but they're just kind of editing and tweaking and catering it towards the students so they have more communication, better communication. And they're also at the same time doing research um, to try to find more effective ways that they can learn uh, being autistic and deaf. And, oh, it's the first in the country. That's awesome. I wonder so what kind of technologies they're gonna implement. I don't know, but they, I think um, they're funded by a lot of grants and they're trying to open, right now they, well the whole program serves over 600 deaf students. Wow. But in this particular program, it's like eight students. So they want to open it up for more around the country, around the state. So they're working on that. Awesome. Okay. Watch and learn. Um, this isn't, is more than one video actually. It's this, I think we talked about it a while ago, but YouTube put out this channel. It's called Life in a Day. And basically what it is, is they had users send in their submissions from anything they're doing pretty much during their course of a day and they got over 80,000 submissions from over 190 something countries um, so basically what it is the channels grouped there's videos and they're kind of grouped by geographic region and like tags That's awesome. and I think it's a really great tool you can use it um, to, you know see what someone on the other side of the world is doing you can use it in global studies kind of um, assignments like that and then I think you could also use it to kind of segue into like pen pals and you know doing class projects with people on the other side of the world Deploy using all the things. Yeah, so that is a cool channel. Check it out. And I think oh I don't think I read it. Um, <laughs> at the end they're they're making a film out of it. That's the whole point of it pretty much. So like like on YouTube or, or a, a video. I think it's a. I think it's on YouTube. Oh, yeah, okay. it's just like a big with all these people in there. So. Yeah, because didn't didn't Waiting for Superman come out? I think so because I saw it on the news. Yeah, I saw something about it. We, yeah. we're, we'll, we'll have to talk about that next week because it's interesting. Yeah. Anyway, side note: teach this this week. I'm talking about homework um, tips for parents and teachers. Um, this is sort of the time for teachers where they're getting ready for open, open, almost said open mic night. <laughs> no, they could uh, be. Maybe. Open house and meet the teacher night. And uh, one of the biggest questions that I got was always about homework. How much homework? How often? How can I help? In some ways, um, some of my parents were maybe a little bit too involved, some a little bit um, less involved. So here's some tips that you can give your, your parents and guardians um, about homework. Number one. Establish a routine and schedule. This requires um, parents to really set a time and place for homework and stick to that schedule. Um, limit distractions, whether it be the television, noise distractions, um, and also try not to have your kids start it too late in the evening. Um, there's just too many distractions. So number one, establish a routine and schedules. Uh, tip number two, let go and let learn. Um, it's okay for for parents and guardians to sort of help with reading directions and getting started on homework, but then um, they really need to back back off a little bit. I hesitate to say that, but just just give more responsibility to the kids and let them let them really work at it. It's not um, the parents' responsibility to correct every answer. I think that that information really gives teachers a lot of a lot of um, good information for for developing remediation and and 
and figuring out exactly, maybe reflecting on a lesson, a lot of information. So it's, I think it's okay for parents to, to take a look at the work, make sure it's neat, make sure it's complete, but don't necessarily do the work for the kids. So that's one, one big tip that I always give my parents was just really let go and let, let the kids learn and let the kids work through it. Um, one rule though that, that the parents can do is really help the students get organized. That, that, that kind of includes organizing assignments, organizing dates, uh, maybe dividing some of those bigger, bigger projects into small manageable chunks. Um, supervising, especially in the beginning of the year, that completed homework leaves home. Uh, and also helping students plan study sessions. One of the biggest challenges for my students was really um, learning how to set study times throughout the week and not just right before the quiz or right before the test. So I think that's a really crucial parent guardian role that, that where they can help. Um, Four, use positive reinforcement. Uh, give your parents and guardians a tip to really praise kids when they do do place a good effort on homework. Um, maybe offer positive incentives, and these incentives don't have to be monetary. It could be as easy as, hey, um, you know, you complete your homework on time uh, neatly every day this week, and, and you're going to be able to pick a family movie or, or some type of activity that might not require money. Um, I mean, if you have the money, that might be the way too, but you don't want to bribe them. Um, also, I, I really want to stress, I, I did to my parents, to model a love of learning. Um, take the kids to the library once a week. Really show them that you love reading and you love learning. Um, and then they'll start to love it too. And last, uh, seek help when necessary. Uh, make sure that your parents know not to have, your, have their child working an excessive amount of time on homework. If they're really struggling, maybe send a note to you, to the teacher. Um, let them know their frustration level. Let them know wh where they where they need help. A lot of schools offer free tutoring, maybe before school, after school. Um, there 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 are different kids in the class that might be willing to help tutor. So let them let them know that. Um, it's really a good idea for the kids to also set up a study buddy. That way, if they need clarification or maybe they were absent or something like that, they can they can have somebody to call. So establish a routine and schedule. Let go and let learn. Help the students stay organized. Use positive reinforcement and seek help when necessary. So those are the five tips for parents and students and teachers and students. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. Okay, eat freebies. There are more grants that are available this week that we want to talk about. I'm just going to quickly go over them. There's about well, one, two, three, four. There's six that I, I wrote about in the blog. Um, the first one is the Ezra Jack Keats Foundation, and pretty much it's dedicated to the author. Um, all a lot of his royalties are used to benefit the foundation and they're used pretty much for writing and reading based kind of programs that want to get started. Um, the Captain Planet Foundation grants, yes, like the nice. show, Captain Planet. <laughs> I love Captain Planet. Um, they're pretty much setting out to better the environment, just like the show, and uh, their grants go towards more hands-on interaction, problem-solving environment like um, projects. The next one is the Northrop Grunman Corp. Uh, grant and they're pretty much uh, one of their like big goals is that they want to make education a top priority and like keep it there so um, that's the goal of their grants and they're available for schools and programs about education. Um, Verizon Foundation grants this one's actually ongoing and they're just continually giving back to schools if anything from cash grants to training and there's tools on the website and there's volunteers and there's a lot of information there. Another ongoing one is the Do Something Grant and this one is kind of random. It's for like really different things like such as music programs and then there's um, programs that want to prevent or raise awareness of diseases and community kind of type programs. So it's all different health, environment, community um, goals there. And the last one is the Intel Community Grant which is um, really trying to incorporate technology into the classroom, giving more educational opportunities. And those last three are all ongoing. So. Cool. So what do you know? Oh, what oh, do I know? You're gonna ask me oh, you got me off guard there for a <laughs> second. Um, over twenty million dollars is spent on Halloween candy every single year. Like tw throughout the whole year, or just enough? No, time? like in you know after oh. Halloween, like during Halloween time. <laughs> <laughs> 20, <laughs> what was it, 20 million pounds of that candy is candy corn. I love candy corn. I know. And uh, the top selling candy corn, it's like box or something like that. Yeah. If you were to take the all the candy corn that's sold at Halloween in one year and place it like 
line it up, it would travel around the Earth four and a quarter times. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. What do you know? I know that the uh, record for the world's tallest dog is three feet seven inches, and that <laughs> is uh, a great dame named Giant George. Who sleeps in his own queen size bed? Nice. <laughs> you know how, like, how much he weighs? Yes, I do actually. Two hundred forty-five pounds. <laughs> Little fella. <laughs> That's like three feet something like that tall. That's yep. crazy. Um, if you like our show, give us five stars on iTunes, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter. See you later.